mail day. I know what these are. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. It just came in extremely fast. Whoa. Smackdown Pro, and then a 12-inch Spider Archery uh, bar. Anyway, I'm gonna put that on my Hoyt and um, and probably sell the Hoyt. Not probably. I'm, I'm going to sell the Hoyt. I'm sure. So, if y'all are interested in that, leave a comment below, and we can work out a deal or something like that. These are the veins I have been shooting. For the entire year. Fusion X2's 3 inch version. And what I have here are a couple different vein configurations. I got some AAE Stealth Hunters, some Boning Broncos, which I've killed some animals with these. I typically don't like the AAEs. The main reason I don't like them is because they're a pain in the butt to fletch. Okay, and they're not a pain in the butt to fletch correctly if you go through all the steps. Wipe the shaft down prime it, use their glue, they stick really well and they bond really well. Here's the deal, I don't have a lot of patience when it comes to fletching arrows, so I like the lick and stick style vein. The boning is a lick and stick style vein. This is a lick and stick style vein. And they're super, super durable, super quiet. For the AAEs, I know they're max stealth. They're not very stealthy in comparison to these bonings and the fusions. So, I got two of each configuration fletched up because I am going to base this solely on performance. And we're going to do a video on durability, accuracy, vein adhesion, ease of fletch, the whole nine. Uh, and we're going to do a comparison video of these three. And we're also going to put the TAC vein in there. That's a newer vein on the market. So, we're going to do a uh, three fletch. I'm going to run three fletches. Uh, for these tests and my buddy is going to run a four fletch for these tests so without further ado we're going to strip these two build them with some fusions and we're going to shoot them a little bit later but when you are scraping your arrow shaft make sure you have a semi dull blade so you don't peel up any carbon because it will aggravate you because then that arrow is the jig I'm using is a Jojan fletching jig. It has a right helical with it. Um, it just works really good. They're, this is an old one. I actually got it from a really good friend that no longer bow hunts, but it's a good jig. One thing I always want to check, make sure your fletching orientation is right. But you always want to check how is it going to seat on that shaft on the back and front end and to make sure you don't have to make any adjustments because you don't want the back end of your vein to be lifted or the front end because it's not seated perfect. And the main reason you want to check that is because all your cups on your veins are different. So it's just one of the good things to just put it in there a couple times and make sure you get it right. Kind of one of them measure one, measure twice. Kind of like one of those measure twice, cut once things. So the glue that I use for lick and stick style veins is just this Gorilla Super Glue. It's a brush and nozzle. Just works really, really good. Get a good, good adhesion and it sets up really, really fast, which is what I like. I like to be able to shoot my arrows as soon as they're fletched. Put your little bit in there and then run your little tip on it back and forth. Seat it on the cup. And then you just slowly go from heel to there. Let it rest. You just want to grab the shaft underneath and press your clamp down to it and hold it for about 10 seconds. This will get some pressure. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to push that up, and while we wait, I'm going to clean this other arrow up and clean my mess up. I'm going to turn the vein, because it's been there for about 30 seconds, 40 seconds. I'm going to grab it, I'm going to turn it. Seat the next vein. All right, now here comes a little tip. And you can do this as you're fletching or you can do it after you're fletching. Done fletching, you take a little Q-tip and just run it down the edge of these to kind of clean that extra glue off. And now, you don't have that extra glue sitting right there. This looks ugly. All right, well, it is extremely windy, so we're gonna shoot from the comfort of my house. <laughs> we'll get a little over the shoulder view of these and I have two bonings, two fusions, two AEs. I'm going to just mix them up, shuffle them, shoot them in no specific order and just get some shots with them. Probably shoot two or three rounds with y'all and uh, see if we can find one that just flies exceptionally well. This is only like 21 yards or so so we're just going to play right here for a minute. Then whenever that wind calms down this afternoon, I'll go out and really shoot the thing at 40 and probably even 60 yards. back into this one almost robin hooded that would be pretty cool to do on video just sucks tossed an arrow but anyway rebuild one more arrow that way this evening i can get after some more testing In the big city of Tyler, Texas. I'm headed to Gander Outdoors. Um, because I bought some camo there the other day and they left a security tag on it. So, I'm gonna go up there. I'm gonna do some more shopping while I'm there because you gotta look, you know. I actually need some like Scotch Guard or something like that for my boots just to waterproof them really, really good for this weekend because I don't want them to get soaking wet. So, speaking of, this weekend me and Philip and Will are headed out to a public land piece uh, to hunt Friday and Saturday for some pigs it is not very far from Palestine and actually where we all grew up um, if y'all don't know me Will and Philip were all cousins uh, we grew up together uh, well not so much Will because he married mine and Philip's cousin but me and Philip grew up together right down the road. I think we lived like six miles apart maybe. Um, and then Will started dating our cousin, which is now his wife. Um, and they were probably 15 or 16 when they started dating. And now I think they're about 27. So, been knowing Will a long time. Um, so, anyway, it's right where we grew up. We've never hunted it though surprisingly right uh, so we are gonna go do some 
pig hunting and also probably a little bit of deer scouting while you're doing it just to see uh, what kind of sign is out there. We have had some trail cameras out there in the past and had some grande, grande bucks on them. And uh, yeah, so that's what this weekend's gonna hold. But until then, we're going to Gander Outdoors. All right, well, we are headed back home. I picked up a 511 backpack. So the backpack I have now is a game plan cameraman. It sucks. I mean, just, I mean, it sucks. It's a cool backpack, I guess, but there's just so much wasted space. Like I don't have a big enough camera to fill it up. Uh, it's a lot of dead space in that bag and it's super uncomfortable to carry uh, outside of just going to a stand. You know, if I had to stalk and it's bulky, it's huge, terrible support throughout your shoulders and back. Uh, so this bag has a lot more lumbar support. It fits on my back a little bit better. Um, and it has a hydration pack, which is gonna be key for this public land hunt, is, is a hydration pack and making sure that you have access to water. Um, I'd rather not carry four or five water bottles rolling around in my bag and then, you know, just having to also not that cleaning up is a hard thing to do, but then you got to keep up with all your trash because you don't want to, uh, you just don't want to treat any land that way. So I think this is a little bit better option. So anyway, we're headed back to the house. Let's see, Athens in tow with six bear shafts. I gotta go knock tune them in. My messed up and we had a huge storm blow in and my paper tuner with all my paper on it got soaking wet. So I'm heading over to a buddy's house at the moment to, uh, yeah, go knock tune these so I can get them fletched up so I can take them hunting. My bow is sighted into them. I just gotta get these last six. <laughs> All right, so I've gotten a couple questions on what is knock tuning or knock indexing. All right, so essentially you want to find the backbone of that arrow and you want it to be in the same spot and you want to fletch it accordingly. So it comes, I like to put, you know, you put it in the up position. Wherever that backbone is, I just mark it on the up position because I shoot odd vein up. And uh, essentially what you do is you're looking to just get your arrows all the same, okay? Because they don't all shoot bullet holes. Even if they come factory flesh, I, I promise they don't. So it just helps and aids in a lot of headaches and aggravations when it comes down to broadhead tuning. So I am going to shoot that piece of paper from about three feet until I get a perfect bullet hole. So you're gonna anchor in just like you normally would and just shoot, make a good clean shot through paper. You're gonna grab this so we can look right there. I'm have a tear through the paper. Okay, so you grab your arrow. Now, this is how you correct this behavior, this misbehaving arrow. You mark it once so you know which way to knock it for the rest of this thing. And then you're just gonna start spinning it. So I'm just gonna give it a quarter turn. Don't matter which way you go, uh, I really don't. I'm gonna do a quarter turn and we're gonna do it again. All right. No, I know you're looking at the ceiling. Bear with me. So there is the second shot right through there. The tear is worse. So I'm getting farther away from the backbone. So what you can do at that point, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spin the arrow back a quarter turn the other way. 
Try it again. Yes, this is a lot of trial and error, but once you get it, your arrows fly really, really good, and you rarely have an issue with a broadhead not flying correctly. Okay, so that took a whole lot more effort than what the other five did, of course, because it's the one that I want to film. So, I'm gonna stop the camera, I'm gonna turn around the camera and show you all the tears that I was getting, and I just finally found that just that sweet spot and it finally shot a good bullet hole through paper. Whoa! Okay, so yes, this was a blank sheet. It took me a while to get it figured out. And you see, these are just so, like, such minor tears, it ain't even funny. But here's the one that I'm just gonna call good. Where is it? Right there. See if I can get that to focus. So, that's what you're trying to achieve. The best bullet hole for each shaft. Now, what you do is you mark it, you fletch it accordingly to that mark and how your orientation needs to be. And I promise you, your broadheads will fly better, your bow will be more forgiving, and it's just a whole lot more efficient when it comes to penetration. Simple as that. So, I'm going to go finish getting ready for this hunt this weekend.